straight. And then after that, we're going to rearrange how Paul said it. So 6 to 11 says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Paul repeats his... Ang, ang style magandi Paul is like this. He says, while this happened, this is what God did, therefore, money effect. And then, ibalik-balik na niya and he rephrases it many times. Kita, modern man ta. We don't speak in a Greek way, but in an English way. And so, we talk na... Kano pitong pinasubject verb niya? Isa tawag na, recipient of the subject or recipient of the verb. So, we're gonna rearrange what Paul said. In verses 6 to 11, so God pours His love into our hearts. How? God shows His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. So how does God describe us? Sinners? Weak? meaning incapable of anything good. That's what we call weak. So we're sinners. We're ungodly. Okay. And lastly, enemies. You know the perfect example for enemies right now? ISIS. You look at ISIS. All the way from the 9-11 to Paris just now. Enemies of God. Here's the thing. We, we seem to think that God hates them but doesn't hate the rest of the world we forget that if God removes common grace if God removes that restraining grace from us all of us will behave worse than ISIS all of us will be killing murdering, pillaging, destroying chaos and world if not for God's grace the fact that God is even restraining the world's chaos is grace in itself so, at the very, very core, it's God versus the world. As much as we hate ISIS right now, imagine how God feels towards everything else and everyone else, including ISIS. Now, let's not forget who wrote this letter. Who wrote the, who wrote the book of Romans? Paul. What was he before he became a believer? A Pharisee. As a Pharisee, what did he do? He did ISIS stuff against Christians. He was actually a killer or a murderer of Christians. Imagine how Paul felt. Yeah. Excited Kesha on the way, road to Damascus, I'm going to kill more Christians. And then Jesus comes in, intervenes in his life. Well, Jesus revealed himself to Paul. He says, when Paul goes, who are you? He says, Jesus, ako ang imong persecute, wa kaila. After that, Paul got blinded. When he got blinded, he got saved. Imagine how he'd feel. Murder of Christians, now serving Christ. You know what I find so weird in the Bible? Paul killed so many Christians, right? And then he became a Christian. So he's preaching in the churches that he used to ravage and destroy. How come in the whole Bible, there's not one scene man lang, not one mention of one of the vic families of the vic his victims when he approached Nia. I would have loved to find out what happened. You know, can you picture it if one of the victims go to Paul and say, you killed my brother, you killed my, I know, and I watched him get killed. I forgive you. Can you imagine what, would, what that would do to someone like Paul? Can you imagine what that would do to a former ISIS member? I'm born again. Can you imagine the great breaking in his heart when he realizes, oh my gosh, 
it's God who I'm offending and suddenly God is saving me when God should strike me dead and burn me in hell today right now instead his son while I was an enemy Christ died and then from there the change happens from there he repents of his sin turns to the Lord and runs towards God fully can you imagine as much as we hate What's happening in Paris today? We have a bigger issue. The bigger issue is peace with God. You know, peace is most easily appreciated when there's war around us. Agreed? Kung peace, peace isn't a big deal. But when there's war, everybody suddenly wants peace. We forget that right now, everyone's still at war with God. Everybody. When God finally comes and brings judgment the war will be so apparent and suddenly everyone will say oh peace na lang ta with God peace na ta Lord how? it's through Christ look at verse 9 since therefore we have been justified by his blood much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God for if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life more than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have, we have now received reconciliation. If you just count the number of words, the number of times that certain words and themes were repeated, let me give you the, the word count. Huh? Justification, or justified, peace, saved, is mentioned nine times. Nine. The mention of suffering is only mentioned once. Satanan suffering that's been happening, Paul addresses it or mentions it once. Grabe ka insensitive siguro ni Paul, no? Is that how you'd feel? Or maybe, Paul is saying, I'm not emphasizing on the suffering because that's not the focus. Now, hope, rejoicing, the whole faith, mentioned three times. But the death of Christ, how many times was it mentioned? Twelve times. The emphasis is on two things. The death of Christ, and then what we get. Justification, peace, reconciliation, saved, be, finding hope. balik balik ni Paul. That's his focus. So here's the summary. Well, number one is our problem. The problem is really our suffering in this world. But what causes it? Sin. If all I sin, what am I suffering? If there was no sin, there, was no, there would be no suffering, no chaos, no gubot, no fighting, no violence, nothing. It's because of sin that all these things are happening. So if you, you really want peace, like for example, if you look at peace right now or the situations of Paris, if you say, let's have peace, let's have peace, how can you have peace? Do you honestly expect that if you go to these Victims, the families, and say, forgive them, forgive them. You really think they would? I doubt it. The godless, those who are at enmity with God, those who don't believe in Christ, you tell them, forgive na lang, the ice is good for killing your whole family. Ikaw na lang nabilin niya, putlan pa jugag tail, forgive. You think they can without God? Strongly doubt it. You think nga if the whole world was to make a census, obliterate ISIS, or forgive ISIS. What do you think the world will vote? If Facebook, you know how Facebook has this new thing now with the flag, uh, you just you change your profile pic? Uh, change your profile pic to red if you want blood. Change your profile pic to white if you want to forgive ISIS. Pilipusta, Facebook will be red. Tanan. Even many Christians will choose red. I don't know, I struggle siguro ko. Red or white? Red or white? You know, pwede red, white, dili? You know? It's, it's hard. No, I, I'd probably have a real struggle to choose forgiveness. With the grace of God, probably, I believe man nga God convicts the heart. So, I believe nga genuine Christians, Christians who truly, truly love God and are serious with their faith, will probably choose to forgive. The rest, will choose, kill, fight, destroy them. 
What about God? If God, sorry for this illustration, it will sound a little blasphemous, but I'm extending the illustration. If God had a Facebook page, and there's a question also, God, forgive mankind, destroy mankind. What do you think God should choose? Has to be red. Shall mismo mo choose red towards us. But because of his love, he sends Christ and says, We're choosing the white. We're going to save some. We're going to forgive some. And when he does, it changes our perspective. Suddenly, the sufferings of this world, I know it's terrible. Paris, the pain, the suffering. You look at pictures lying tayo tanaw. Especially if nine nigawas on Facebook just last night, there's this collage bit of all the stuff ISIS has done. Can I give video bang pinas pasay ba? And you look at it bit of uh uh kinda bit of uh sorry it is gonna be graphic, but there's a father and a mother and they're kneeling on the grass. Onya the father is holding the head of his daughter, the mother is hugging the body. So na putlan, you see things like that. You see people in cages na drown sa swimming pool. Ang kita kagina na mo, Lord. Lami kay mo fight, bitaw lami kay masuko. But then, all that as sakit as it sounds. Paul says, that's that's not the focus. He mentioned suffering just once. The focus is not on the suffering of this world. The greatest tragedy, the greatest injustice is not Paris, as terrible as it is. It's not 9-11. The greatest injustice ever done was the lamb slain on the cross. The innocent being killed for the guilty. Let's qualify that. The truly innocent being killed for the sake of the truly guilty ones. That's us. Once you see this, once it sinks into your hearts, we realize the sufferings of this world, as painful as it is, is nothing. It's really nothing compared to the peace that we have with God, the forgiveness we receive from God. And so how do we apply this? Justification by faith? Rejoicing. We can finally rejoice in God. Let me repeat verse 11. He says, more than that, we also rejoice in God. It doesn't say we rejoice in peace on earth. It doesn't say we rejoice in, you know, our healing or world peace. Not finally, while in war, it says we rejoice in who? God. This is where John Piper actually says God is the gospel. So what's our solution? Our solution really is we give up, we get depressed, compromise, we become hopeless. That's man's usual solutions. Why? Because man is man is by nature, by default, sinners, weak, ungodly, and enemies. What's God's solution? God shows us his love. How? Christ died, 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 Christ died. Twelve times. He repeats it. The solution for all sin is the death of his son. Why? To save us from disease? No. To save us from poverty? No. To save us from loneliness? Lord, save me from whatever worldly situation you're in. Yes, fine. The world is full of suffering. But Christ essentially saves us from sin, from his wrath. What's our response? We rejoice in God. This is where we get our tagline or our motto, Desiring God, Discipling Others. Why did we choose that? Because of Christ's death on the cross. We can now, we have peace with God. We can now, because we're reconciled with God, we can now rejoice in who? In God. That's why we desire God. The goal, the goal for why Christ died on the cross is not for us to enter heaven and enjoy heaven. It's not heaven we're supposed to enjoy. It's the presence of God 
that we will enjoy. Heaven with the absence of God is not heaven by definition. The only reason why heaven is heaven is because God is there. We experience His presence, we experience His glory, we experience His beauty and majesty, and we can worship Him forever. That's the whole point, why Christ died. So we can rejoice in God. And why do we disciple others? Compassion. The question is, have you received that kind of love that God has poured in your hearts through the Holy Spirit, that divine love where you can even disciple someone as ungodly, as unlovable as an ISIS member? That is one of the hardest questions. Um, before I end, uh, I just want to recommend a video to you guys. Please go on YouTube whenever you can and search a video entitled uh, A Message to ISIS from the People of the Cross. Uh, later this afternoon... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, later this afternoon what we can do, we can actually show you a video for that. We can save it later. But we'll show you that video so you'll realize uh, what God calls us to do. So for now, we'll end with prayer and then we'll have lunch. And then we'll do something different. Uh, before going into the workshop, uh, we're going to have a devotional. Okay. Sige. Uh, let's end with a prayer.